During the Crimean War, more soldiers died from infection than in battle. Until a nurse introduced sanitary practices still in use today. When the scourge of polio hit the world, it was standard practice to strap down and immobilize patients. Until a nurse discovered that movement and physical therapy had far better results. In the 1950s, jaundice was a leading cause of infant death. Until a nurse found that a few hours of sunlight could actually cure the condition. At the dawn of the AIDS epidemic, no one knew how the disease spread. So patients were kept quarantined and alone until nurses defied convention and embraced them with compassion. During the Ebola outbreak, the disease was thought by many to be too contagious to treat until a student nurse used what she had on hand garbage bags and duct tape to protect herself so she could care for others. And cerebral palsy robbed many patients of their ability to speak until a nurse gave them back their voices. And I will always be grateful to her. I am a nurse. I am a nurse practitioner by license and training. I am also an innovator and an entrepreneur. And I'm here today to make sure that all of you, all 3,000 of you, oh my God, you are amazing, will one day say the exact same thing about yourselves, that you are nurses, that you are innovators, and that you are entrepreneurs and we are going to make it happen. Interestingly, over the course of the last hundred years in nursing writings, academic research, and newspaper stories, there is little to no mention of nurses as innovators and entrepreneurs. But all of that is changing, and I'm standing in front of you as the Director of Nurse Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Northeastern University's School of Nursing. It's the first program of its kind, and it's the first initiative bold enough to put those three words, nurse, innovation, and entrepreneurship together and make them mean something. And I'm willing to bet that in the next hundred years, it will be nurses who lead the forefront of healthcare innovation and entrepreneurship. So how do we make this happen? Well, it's going to start with doing three things right here, right now, with all of you. First, we're going to change the conversation around nursing. We are going to redefine it on our terms. We're no longer going to say, I'm just a nurse or only a nurse. We are proudly and boldly going to say, I am a nurse. Second, we are going to embrace our role as innovators. Nurses are natural MacGyvers. Give them a roll of tape and watch out and look at what they do. Embrace that role. 
And third, learn the business of healthcare. We nurses must learn finance, operation, strategy, and entrepreneurship so we can drive forward the transformational change that healthcare so desperately needs. And it is going to be nurses leading this change. Let me give you a couple statistics. There are 19 million nurses worldwide. There are 4 million nurses alone in the United States. And for the past 16 years running, the Gallup poll has ranked nurses as the most trusted profession in the United States. That is a huge testament to the work you do. <laughs> However, a study that was conducted by Johnson & Johnson said that although the people know that we're very trustworthy, they have little understanding of what we actually do as nurses. And to be frank, we don't talk about it because it's not polite conversation. So what we do is when people say, hey, what do you do as a nurse? Or can I get your opinion on this? We start that conversation with, well, I'm just a nurse, or I'm only a nurse, but... And we need to change that. Because the reality is, every shift, Nurses handle hundreds of thousands of dollars of highly complex medical equipment, technology, and medication to keep patients alive the 23 hours a day a physician is not by the bedside. Nurses stand on the front line between life and death, noticing the subtle changes before things go from bad to worse. Every clinical interaction begins with and ends with a nurse. And even more interestingly, every medical product on the market, the nurse is nearly the last end user of. We are healthcare rock stars. What, though, is that in many situations, the nurse is not invited into the conference rooms and the decision-making on which products should be brought forth into the healthcare arena. And that's crazy, because I can't tell you how many times as a nurse, new technology was brought onto the floor that was supposed to make our workflow better and actually gave us more work to do. You guys been there. I can give you an example. At the hospital I was working on, they were super excited about this new communication system we were all going to wear around our neck. So they gave us this device, we put it on, and we headed out into our rooms. And suddenly, this device starts screaming at us, Dr. So-and-so is on the phone, your blood products are ready, so-and-so wants a cup of water. By the end of the shift, we kept getting yelled at, we all had taken it off and put it at the front desk. The hospital had to call the company back out and for the next six weeks have them follow us to learn what exactly is the product that you need as a nurse? Imagine if they had engaged the nurse at the beginning of that conversation. How it would drive down healthcare costs and increase patient outcomes. Because we as nurses are natural innovators and we are already innovating in the healthcare space. And that is what our initiative is about. Research has shown that nurses are doing 27 workarounds per shift. That means 27 times a day, you guys are out there MacGyvering and manipulating the medical products that aren't working for you so that they do work for you. And we need to make sure that we keep doing this. But the truth is, is nurses are constantly innovating in an environment that is highly inefficient. So how do we create a safe place where nurses can innovate without worrying about having to follow protocol? Well, there's one idea. It's called hackathons. A few years ago, I didn't even know what a hackathon was or how that one weekend would potentially change my life and how that one event sparked and ignited the Nurse Innovation and Entrepreneurship Initiative. And I think it's at time I tell you a bit about my story because it's a story about going out into uncharted waters where you're forced to be uncomfortable so you can find out where you fit. 
A few years ago, I was a struggling nurse entrepreneur. And a friend of mine who was also an entrepreneur said, Rebecca, there's this healthcare hackathon coming up. You should go. And I said, Nick, what is a hackathon? And he said, well, it's this three-day event where people get together, pose problems in healthcare, form teams, and over the course of 56 hours, create solutions, pitch them to a team of judges for funding, and I loved it. <laughs> I signed up, showed up, looked around the room, and realized I was the only nurse there. And I thought, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> but I stayed, and I joined a team, and over the course of that weekend, I learned more about the business of healthcare than I had learned an entire year of trying to build a healthcare business. In those 56 hours, my teammates and I worked tirelessly to build a communication platform that would work between clinicians and patients. And we'd be sitting in this room, and the door would open, and in would walk a chief executive of a major healthcare system, company, or startup, and they'd sit down in the chair next to you. And I'd be like, oh, they're here to talk to the doctor. And what I couldn't believe was they were genuinely interested in my knowledge as a nurse. I had never before been engaged in such a manner that it inspired me to look into this situation more. Our team went on to win second place, and although the company didn't go anywhere, the truth was, fundamentally, I knew that I was forever different from that moment and that experience. So I started to study the environment of healthcare hackathons around Boston. And what I realized and what I learned when I talked to the organizers and went to their websites is that it was a very small percentage of nurses attended these events, but the vast majority of the teams that won had nurses on them. So I hypothesized. Nurses have the practical experience to create winning solutions. And it was in that moment I knew that there had to be a nurse hackathon. So I finally worked up the courage, picked up the phone and called Northeastern University, where I was connected with Dr. Nancy Hanrahan, who at the time was the dean of the School of Nursing. I told her about my experience at this hackathon, and she said, Rebecca, I'm running this summit on innovation and entrepreneurship. Why don't you run a nurse hackathon? And I said, well, I've been to a hackathon. Sure, I'll run a hackathon. <laughs> I joined an incredible team of volunteers, and we worked towards this event. But none of us knew if anybody was going to show up, if anybody would believe that nurses should be innovators, because nobody was talking about it, nobody was doing it, nobody was inviting nurses to the table. Suddenly, two weeks before that event, the phone rings. I pick it up. Dr. Hanrahan says, Rebecca, what are we going to do next? I don't know, Dr. Hanrahan, what are we going to do next? She said, well, the event is sold out. There's 250 people coming. We can't give nurses the exposure to innovation and not give them the resources to be successful. I want you to come on and be the director of nurse innovation and entrepreneurship. We'll build the plane as we fly it. <laughs> that was June 2016. In the last 18 months, we've hosted 22 innovation events. <laughs> our nurses of our winning teams of our hackathons have gone on to start companies, patent products, and seven of our nurse practitioners have gone on to open up their own healthcare clinics in seven months since our NP Entrepreneurship Conference. We are seeing incredible results. We are seeing impactful change. We are seeing this being led by nurses. And the truth is, is I am going to give you the example of two incredible nurse entrepreneurs 
Bef right after I tell you the story, a bit more about Dr. Hanrahan and how we move this forward. Dr. Hanrahan is not only my mentor, but also my champion. And she also happens to be the most innovative and forward-thinking nurse that I have ever met. She was the first dean in the country to now famously say, nursing education must include innovation and entrepreneurship. Nursing students cannot graduate just wearing a stethoscope, but they must carry a briefcase. Nursing education must include a strong clinical toolkit and a strong business toolkit. We must know finance, operations, strategy, and entrepreneurship so we can advance forward healthcare. And because of her, we are redefining what's possible for nursing. So let me tell you about these two rock star nurses out there that are entrepreneurs representing the future of what we see. The first is a nurse by the name Melissa Gerson. Melissa was a maternity NICU nurse, and what she recognized is that preemies did not sleep. And if they did not sleep, they did not eat. And if they did not eat, they went on to develop failure to thrive. So as she studied this environment, she recognized that in the womb, there was a constant state of motion. So she created this map that mimicked the motion of the womb. And when she put the preemie babies on it and the colicky babies on it, they started to sleep. And as they started to eat, they started to thrive. And she took her idea all the way to the real Shark Tank. Yes, the one on TV. And her pitch was so successful that she received a deal better than she asked for and now has gone commercial across the United States. <laughs> that is a rock star nurse. The other nurse I want to tell you about is Maggie McLaughlin, who was a 30-year IV nurse and came to one of our hackathons because she wanted to hack and change the lure lock because what she had experienced was that on her infant patients, the lure lock would come dislodged, and there were so many near misses of babies almost bleeding out because that design was not meant for pediatric patients. And in her elderly patient population, she saw too many mechanical injuries being caused by the lure lock that she wanted to redesign this. She pitched it the first hackathon and nobody joined her team. She thought on it for the next year, came back, formed a team, and within 56 hours had re-engineered the lure lock. And what we learned was that that patent had not been changed for over a century. That patent had stood in place since 1916. Maggie has gone on to patent her product, is in talks with two major medical manufacturers to bring it to market, was on the front page of the Boston Globe's business section. And more inspiring and exciting is that her healthcare hospital system has decided to invest in nursing innovation to promote all of their nurses to the forefront of clinical impact and change makers within their system. This is what is happening in nurse innovation. So what is the difference between innovation and entrepreneurship? Innovation is what we do every day by the bedside. It's how we MacGyver. It's the 27 workarounds a shift that we do. It's the ability of when we help one person, the potential is that we can help many. And this is when innovation becomes entrepreneurship. When you take that idea to help one and scale it to help hundreds and thousands of millions of people. And it does not matter if you are an LPN, an RN, or a PhD, because innovation has nothing to do with your degree. It has everything to do with the passion you have to drive your innovation forward and make the world a better place. Nurse innovation is the great equalizer in nursing. And it happens to also be the place where nursing was founded. Nursing was founded on innovation. And it all started when one woman challenged the status quo, 
challenged conventional medical practice to found modern-day nursing. When I was in nursing school, Florence Nightingale was always held up as the founder of modern-day nursing. And I would think, seriously? Really? Did we peak right at the beginning and there's been a slow decline? <laughs> Could there not be someone else possibly a little bit more relatable to the profession of nursing today? Because the way Florence Nightingale was taught in nursing school felt incredibly tired and unrelatable at best, and at worst, boring and uninspiring. And even when I was a professor of nursing and my students would read the Nightingale Pledge, I would sort of roll my eyes and say, oh, don't we wish could we read something else? <sighs> And as it happens in life, serendipitous moments happen to change the way you thought about the world and what you thought of as truth. And that moment happened for me one day when I was at a book fair with my seven-year-old daughter, and she came across a book on Florence Nightingale. And she said, Mommy, I found a book on a nurse. Can we read about her? And I said, oh, great. <laughs> we are definitely going to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> so I brought the book home, and I started to realize it. And I found myself pausing. And I found myself stopping to think. And I thought, oh, my God. I had never heard this story before. I had never heard the story of this powerful, knowledgeable, and revolutionary woman who challenged conventional medical practice to found modern-day nursing. So I'm going to share with you today the story I never heard in nursing school, the real story of Florence Nightingale. It was the year 1850, and the British government was entrenched in a bloody battle called the Crimean War. Florence Nightingale was working as a volunteer in one of the wards where the patients were brought after they had been injured on the battlefield. Unlike women of her time, Florence Nightingale had been educated. And as she watched the death, disease, and misery around her, she decided to write a letter to the British government in which she wrote, if you had wanted to create a place worse than hell, you have thus succeeded. <laughs> For what she saw was that the patients were not dying from the injuries they sustained on the battlefield, but were dying from what appeared to be was disease and infection that followed the physician from the bedside to the bedside to the bedside as he did not wash his hands or sterilize his medical equipment. Florence and Nightingale had to challenge the centuries-old medical belief that if you could not see it, it did not exist, and that germs were simply a figment of your imagination. Florence Nightingale had to be meticulous in her documentation, her follow-up, her studies, to prove that washing one's hands and sterilizing medical equipment not only decreased rates of infection and disease, but it saved patients' lives. Florence Nightingale founded modern-day nursing by challenging conventional medical practice. And in the course of the last 200 years, there has still never been a better invention than washing one's hands and sterilizing medical equipment to stop the spread of infection and disease. This is no small feat. This is a monumental change. This is what nursing was founded on. Nursing was not founded because it was easy. Nursing was founded because it was hard. 
Florence Nightingale gave a quote in which she said, if there were none in the world who were discontented, the world would never reach anything better. And what that means is in moments of great challenge, there is opportunity for great change. Innovation is the moment between stagnation and progress. Innovation is the impossible, the unbelievable, the unattainable, until it is the possible, the attainable, the believable. Don't let anyone ever tell you that it can't be done because it simply just hasn't yet been done. If you see something wrong in nursing, change it. Carpe diem sees the day there is no better time than the present. And I must leave you now as where I began, instead with four things we must do instead of three, to redefine and put nurses as the front of healthcare innovators. First, we must change the conversation. From this moment forward, you stand up and proudly and boldly say, I am a nurse. Two, you embrace the role of the innovator. Run fast, run hard, innovate every day you are out there and believe that you can. Three, learn the business of healthcare. Don't be scared of finance, strategy, operations, or entrepreneurship, because it will give you the skill set you need to be able to sit at the boardroom table and drive forward the transformational change that is needed to be led by nursing. And four, and finally, challenge the status quo. Channel your inner Florence Nightingale and find inspiration in the creation of the greatest profession on earth, nursing. Thank you. <laughs>